It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport at Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fedler, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport, Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979, Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. Welcome inside the Madame Athletic Center. It's day three and four of the 2024 University Cup Men's Hockey Championship. And tonight we've got a spicy matchup between provincial rivals in the semifinals. It's the six seed, McGill Redbirds, taking on the two seed, UQTR Patriot. Curtis Coleman, Matthew Smith, bringing you tonight's action. And Matt, obviously, these two teams do not like each other. Yeah, you said it, Curtis. I mean, in the OUA playoffs, they faced each other in the East Finals. UQTR coming on top of that series with a 2-1 series win. And for both of these teams, there's some interesting things to look at. For UQTR, they just got to keep playing their game. From the goalie, net out to the forwards, everyone's been playing well. And for McGill, of course, their power play, if not one of the best, the best right now in the tournament, 34% good for second OUA, has been red hot. One of the big reasons they came out on top versus the second seed UBC Thunderbirds. So, you know, if you're UQTR, you want to stay five on five. For McGill, you want to draw penalties. How do you do that, Curtis? You want to be in the opposition zone controlling play. Defenders get tired. Eventually, a call will go your way. Yeah, you said it. We take a look at the bracket right now. McGill, as you said, came off that upset win over the three seed Thunderbirds. Two of their goals, at least their first two goals, came on the power play. The winner of this will take on the undefeated UNB Reds in the finals with a chance to end their perfect season. Which one of these teams will it be, though, is the big question. Yeah, McGill, you know, trying to get back to the championship when they last won it in 2011 for UQTR. They just won in 2022, so they're trying to sort of build this U Sports dynasty. Absolutely. As we take a look now at the comparisons between the teams this season, or in a couple seconds at least, these one, as I mentioned, the lose the winner will play UNB while the loser will face the TMU Bowl, which will be a rough atmosphere taking on the host team for a medal. Yeah, I mean, obviously TMU is going to be very frustrated going into that bronze game with the performance they put on in today's game against UNB, losing 7 nothing. So obviously UQTR and McGill, they don't want to play for bronze. They want to make it to that ever-important gold medal game. So for both teams, they're really just going to have to stick to their game plan to be successful. As I was saying, we take a look at these stats. So close between the two teams this year. 21-7, and seven, same record, 750 or win percentage. But look at the power play difference. McGill staggering 34%. For UQTR, not bad at all, 25% as well. So, you know, UQTR, I'm talking all about this power play for McGill, but their power play is so dangerous as well but look at the PK McGill has been so successful this season overall because how good their special teams have been 89% is good for first in the OUA Curtis yeah been so great this year and on the power play was how they beat UQTR when they matched up in series against each other we take a look at a couple players to watch Simon Lafrance what a game he had yesterday yeah five points against Moncton I mean I was saying it 
you know, when he was playing against Moncton, superstar caliber player, one of the best players in the country right now. And on the other end, Stefan Ward, he had two points, one goal or one goal on the power, or no, sorry, sorry, no goals on the power play, but two points. So it's good to see McGill's second door, uh, secondary scoring uh, showing up. He had 19 points in the regular season. So for them to be successful and have and be able to come out and upset another top-seeded team, they're going to need their full lineup to show up today. Yeah, Irald, of course, scored the game winner in that game as well as we will be back soon to see which of these players and which of these teams can step up and advance to the finals. It's UQTR, it's McGill, it's U Sports on CBC. We'll be right back. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center and to you sports on CBC. Curtis and Matt here to bring you this semifinals between the provincial rivals, the Patriots of UQTR and the Redbirds of McGill's. We take a look at the starting lineup. First for the Redbirds, I believe. And yes, Alexi Shank, what a game he had. Yeah, Curtis, he showed up really big for the Redbirds in that match versus UMB. Saved about 35 shots on, or 35 saves on 37 shots. So that mix with the success on the power play has put them in the position they are to make it to the gold medal game. And for the Patriot, they will look very similar to their game yesterday. 
I mean, Gravel, we talk about how good Shank was, and he was just as good versus Moncton. And, of course, Simon LaFrance, five points. You know, he was the player to watch against Moncton. And when you're going to go out and score five points, then there's no doubt you're going to be the player to watch once again. We are underway in the semifinals. Samuel Italiani wins the faceoff against Brennan Frateroli and some physicality early on. Yeah, a lot of animosity between these two teams, as we know from the history. McGill certainly looking to avenge that OUA East Finals loss. Yeah, it was a tight three-game series. Like you mentioned, they both lo they lost. Every road team won the game. So they must be happy that they're here on the road. Yeah, both teams, I guess, playing to their strengths to a certain extent. As L'Italien gets a steal. Kellen Kochi had a goal and an assist in the opening game of the tournament. Only eight points on the season, so a really strong offensive showing from him. Yeah, that was that goal there from Simon LaFrance, the pass behind his back, and Gauthier was able to read it. Connor Frenette passes it underneath into the near corner. Baudouin battling for it with Taylor Ford. Belzeal. Zach Gallant, long pass, misses its target. Gravel's just going to cover it. End-to-end -end pass just didn't work out, I but they do get a face-off. And for UQTR, Curtis, in this game, it's going to be integral. They stay disciplined out of the box. You know, seventh in the OUA for time shorthanded, so clearly, you know, they do give up opportunities on the power play to opposing teams, and this is certainly not the team you want to give up those opportunities to. McGill, as we know in the OUA East Finals, they went four for six on the power play, Curtis. You know, that's something that... You can be, be outplayed all game, but you get those power play opportunities and you come out with a win. That's something you keep, UQTR Patriots certainly do not want. A face-off win by McGill, but it's blown dead almost immediately. Hopefully we don't see another game where the refs are acting like bouncers. <laughs> yeah, that the UMB Brock game, which was outstand, outstanding to see. I've never seen so many people thrown out of the face-off dot, but... And I believe that's a penalty right away. Not actually a bit impressed that penalty is achievable in that quick amount of time. I'm going to be honest, I had no clue that if you messed up on the faceoff dot, I believe twice, it's certainly like the NHL rule, that you're going to get called for a penalty. And that's what happened. This is the first, I believe, of the tournament that we've seen of sorts. Mathieu, no. It's Mathieu Gagnon going to the box, one of the top faceoff men in their opening round win. He won 13 of 21. So now UQTR will go to the power play. Connor Frenette wins it, but it exits the zone. David Noel, pass to Frenette. He starts at center ice. Simon LaFrance, that's ruled offside. And a bit of physicality after the play. Zach Gallant and David Noel going at it. UQTR, Curtis, this season, 25% on the power play. Good for fourth in the OUA. So, you know, we talk about how successful this Redbird power play is. UQTR is certainly holding their own. Yeah, UQTR was really near the top in pretty much every statistic. First in goals scored, I believe. Second in goals against. First in goal differential. This, all that despite finishing second in the OUA East. David Noel in his own end waiting to start the rush. La France. Crosses center ice and dishes it off to Frenette on the far side boards. Frenette. Sends it around. LaFrance approaches the faceoff circle. He's going to stay outside of it. Drop it to Noel at the point. Frenette cuts inside. He'll do a wraparound. Won't shoot. We'll just drop it back to Noel. Noel, thinking about shooting, finds Frenette in the faceoff circle. Frenette tries a cross ice pass. Couldn't get to Simon LaFrance. It was deflected into the corner. Pierre Olivier Roy fighting on the boards. A couple of McGill players. And it's able to be cleared by Alexandre Gagnon, the winner of the community service award so congratulations to him yeah Curtis on that play for net just trying to force a pass across the LaFrance had an opportunity to shoot it certainly next time I'm going to be thinking shot first for him in tight it was a near chance for Charles Antoine Dumont who missed the net didn't really get a good shot Dumont, one of the more successful players in the QMJHL. And we've talked about this before. UQTR is basically a QMJHL all-star team. Yeah, I mean, you know, mostly Quebec players. So, obviously, they're going to try and stay near close to home. And, luckily, the success of the Patriots and their program and curriculum has attracted a lot of those players. 
some great seasons in junior, and that has translated to great seasons at New Sport. Three consecutive Queen's Cup victories. They're looking for a third consecutive medal at the University Cup Championship. Yeah, absolutely certified a dynasty in the OUA. Just trying to do so in the Nationals as well. Willette drops it. Point shot. Rafa Numazansoa misses wide. Cournoyer loses the puck. Poked away from him by Mathieu Gagnon, who's out of the box. Still 0-0 in shots at the moment. Blanchard bounces off the skate of Eric Uba. Uba, the leading scorer in the OUA playoffs, had a hat-trick in their win against UQTR. Yeah, nine power play goals, too, on the season, Curtis. He's going to be the one to watch for Patria if they end up taking a penalty in this game. It's ruled offside. It'll be a face-off in the neutral zone. Anthony Monroe Boucher taking it for the Patriot, but it's won by Drew Bennett. And the Redbirds, Blanchard, Maxime Blanchard, Caden Daly, Kaelin Daly, and that's offside called. So far, both teams doing an excellent job of transitioning out of the zone into the neutral zone, trying to get some offense going. Certainly both teams do not want to be hemmed in their own zones with the cycle game. So right now, if you're a coach for both teams, you're, you like what you're seeing, you got to keep it up. Well, neither team has a shot yet either. So kudos to the defensive play. Exactly. Connor Frenette taking the face off against Mathieu Gagnon. Frenette 5 of 7 on the face off in their first round win against Moncton, which they were outshot, surprisingly, like we said. Yeah, I don't know if the Patriots were happy with their play. I've seen some of their games. I know they have been better from what we saw against Moncton. They still end up with the win. It goes to show how dangerous this team is when they're playing at their best. A bad pass, and it's a turnover. Poirier starts the other way, hit by Frenette, and it's just dumped in. Alexandre Gagnon chasing on. Lori Rafano Mazensoa kept in by Zach Gallon. Gallon, a third round pick by the Detroit Red Wings in 2017. Lozon dumps it in. There's a delayed offside, and it will be called. A lot of quick whistles so far. You mentioned the draft picks right now in this game well for McGill as a Redbird Eric Uba, Mitchell Prowse, Alexi Shank all tried out NHL player development camps Eric Uba was for Arizona 2019 Prowse Vancouver 2019 and Alexi Shank was there at the Montreal camp back in 2020 Ford keeps it in turnover Pierre-Olivier Roy starts down the right wing. Roy cuts back inside, tries centering it. It's picked up by Stéphane Huard. There's a long shot from the point from Noel, gloved down by Shank, and he's got enough time and space to just give it to his defenseman who's going to clear it. Yeah, obviously you don't want to take the face off in, in your own end, so good decision to give it to his defenseman and clear the zone. Noel had an absolutely phenomenal year for the Patriot this year, a career year named captain, and then just a great season named to the national second team All-Canadian. There's a centering pass that Gravel will stop and hold on to as we talk a little bit about women's hockey. CBC Sports is the home of university sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory right now. The semifinals, Waterloo losing against Concordia 2-0. And at 7 p.m. Central, Saskatchewan. And in Saskatchewan, it will be Montreal taking on U of T. So a nice 
disbursement of uh, conferences here. Three OUA teams in the Final Four of the men. Goes to show how deep the OUA conference really is. You know, they have four right now in the men's national championship. A lot of teams get underlooked because they don't make it to the national championship, but there's a lot of good teams in that OUA conference. And for you mentioned David Noel, what a season he had 25 points in 27 games. But what really, uh, you know, takes your eyes and looking at him is the 12 goals he had in the regular season. Double-digit goal score as a defenseman. Something very difficult to do. And it's a luxury for the Patria to have someone like that on the blue line. Yeah, named OUA East Defenseman of the Year. A great year for him. Maverick Gauthier, long point shot deflected wide by a Redbird. Monroe Boucher tries centering it for Baudouin. But it's stolen and maybe an odd man rush the other way. Gagnon's long shot turned aside by Gravel, and he's not going to be letting up a rebound on a shot like that. No, it's going to be hard to beat Gravel, you know, with, without any traffic in front of him. So, you know, for Gagnon there, next time potentially maybe you shoot low pad, potentially get a rebound when your fellow teammates are skating in like that. But they're going to take the faceoff dot nonetheless in the Patriot defensive zone. Gravel, 935 save percentage, Curtis. Certainly one of the best goaltenders in this tournament. One of the best goaltenders in the nation. He was named tournament MVP in 2022. And a 973 save percentage in the tournament so far. Here's a breakaway. Spinning to the France club down. He was streaking in down the left wing. But Alexi Schenk had his number. Yeah, Stefan Huard, I'm not sure what he was doing. He was looking to get onto the bench for a change, but you had the opposition getting ready, coming on on man rush, and then he turned around last second. Let's take a look at the replay. A nice shot attempt at better glove save by Shank. It's going to be a face-off here. Zach Gallon wins the face-off before high-sticking Frenette. Another penalty immediately off the face-off. Yeah, you know, in the semifinals, these are certainly not the penalties you want to take. You know, for McGill, UQTR, how dangerous they are, five on five as is. Now you're putting them all back on the power play. And you don't want to chase if you're McGill here. You know, you, you ended up chasing UMB in the first period. Luckily, your power play came through. But this is a very, very good UQTR Patriot team. Not saying that the Thunderbirds aren't a good team, but... Got on 56 penalty minutes in the regular season. Like you mentioned, Curtis, the Patria leading a lot in the statistics this season in the OUA. Alexandre Gagnon, another great start to the shorthanded possession. Taylor Ford picks it up, makes the pass, and Mathieu Gagnon's just going to dump it in. Noel, Simon Lafrance, backhands a long cross ice pass. Picked up and passed away. Felix Lafrance now enters the zone. Dishes it off to Simon Lafrance. He's battling on the near boards. He turns it over. The other way. Just dumped in by Dumont. And Gravel plays it. A collision. Curtis, these are just... These are bonehead decisions an, by Redbirds. Yeah, these are not... These are bad penalties to take. Just That's another penalty right there. Gravel came out to play. Dumont was chasing him down. They collide. And then... And the refs are almost always going to side with the goalie on that one. Like, I understand what he's trying to do. He saw Gravel looking to play the puck, and he's trying to intercept it potentially. But oh, as we take a look at the replay here, Gravel looking to play the puck. But, you know, that's one second and a half maybe you have the time to stop yourself. Instead, just runs Gravel. And now it's a five on three early already in this period. Yeah, I've played enough NHL against people who like to run their goalie out of the net to know the goalie will almost always get the call on that play. David Noel on the two-man advantage. L'Italien passes it underneath. Felix Lafrance. Noel, point shot. Save made. Loose puck battled, and it can't be finished. 
by Litanier. They have it up close again. Scores! Simon La France on the cross ice feed. Beat Shank glove side. UQTR leads in the semifinals. Simon La France continuing the amazing start to his tournament right now. Six points so far as we take a look at the replay. The shot from Noel, that was a hard shot. And so Shank had trouble getting it, loses the stick. And then LaFrance wide open for the one-timer. Nothing Shank could do. And now UQTR already up by one and still on the power play, Curtis. Well, Simon, Samuel Litalien was jamming there for the rebound, and he ended up taking one of the defensemen out of the play because he was too busy dealing with Litalien. He was being a little pesky bugger. And that's why it's important to get people in front of the net because that's where the attention for the defensemen are going to be. And luckily, there was no attention on Simon LaFrance, who was and able to one-timer that home. Yeah, unfortunately for McGill, they leave, who is quite possibly the best goal scorer in U sports, wide open on the other side of the ice, who makes no mistake for his second of the tournament. Well, I don't know about the other games, but has anyone had five points yet in this tournament in one game? I would uh, bet money that it's no. So certainly that statement is true with LaFrance. Gravel. Looking holds, like Marty Broder. Holds and waits. Aggressive to play the puck. LaFrance looking for another one maybe. Frenette. Enters the zone with the dump. LaFrance sends it back in. Felix LaFrance trying to play it, but the Redbirds get it, and it's backhanded away by Zach Gallon. Gravel skating around with it some more. Uh, this is, this once again. He's, he's tired of playing goalie, Curtis. I feel like he just wants to be out there. This looks like me in NHL when I just pull the goalie, get them out as much as possible, and it'll be an icing call. Rare occasion, power play team icing the puck. He's looking like a third defender out there behind his own net. And, you know, that's confidence, Curtis. When you're playing so well, I mean, a nine, what was it, 72 save percentage you said right now he has in the tournament, you're playing so well, your confidence is at an all-time high. So, you know, he's not afraid to go out of his net and play pucks to be able to get his defenseman to transition the puck out of the zone, help them out a little bit. Why not? Scott Walford skates it out of the offensive zone. Instead, he's just going to try to kill some time. Uh, yeah, very smart play. Instead of just shooting and giving the puck right back to the Patriots, decides to kill five seconds. Five seconds remain in the penalty. Monroe Boucher enters the offensive zone, picked up by Mathieu Gagnon, and Walford has it. Walford, long pass. Dumont kicks it into the bench of the Patriots. Kubay, Kubay almost got hit by that puck, but the reflex there, a little smile on the bench. Yeah, and we will be taking a quick break. It's Simon LaFrance, the goal scorer, as UQTR leads McGill 1 0. You're watching U Sports. Welcome back to U Sports on CBC. It's 1-0. The Patriot of UQTR lead the McGill Redbirds in the semifinals at the University Cup. Not the ideal start here for the Redbirds. Giving up a couple or a trio of penalties right now to UQTR. And like you said, 25% on the power play for the Patriots this season. You know, 
they can score on the man advantage as well. So you got to limit that because they're a dangerous team at five on five too. It's deflected out of play into the McGill bench by L'Italiani. It'll be a face off at center ice. Now I will say for McGill fans, not to, not don't worry, but this is in their win in the playoffs against the Patriot. They went down two nothing and proceeded to score five unanswered. Absolutely, when you got a power play so dangerous, you know you can go down. You can afford to go down a goal, maybe two goals, as long as you're getting those power play opportunities. See, that's the importance. But we know UQTR, not the most disciplined team, but. They decide to, they want to be. You know, it's going to be tough for McGill to get back in this game. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to draw penalties when they're giving you nothing. Exactly. They got to control the pace of play in the Patriot zone to be able to get defenders to chase and take those penalties. But if it's just going to be UQTR the whole game, then it's going to be hard for them to take penalties. So, well, speaking of, speak of the devil. It will be a power play for the lethal Redbirds unit. The jinx is back. I think between me and you and Damien and Griffin, our two other broadcasters, I think we tend to drink, jinx things a lot. As I, I just finished saying that, and now here we go. 34% on the power play. And this is, you know, this is what wins them hockey games, gets them back into hockey games. They have a great A opportunity here now to tie the game still in the first. It would go a long way right now. So Jeremy Martin, not the most disciplined player on the team. 40 penalty minutes in the regular season in only 13 games. Already taken a penalty in this championship. That's his second. And now the lethal McGill unit will go to the power play. Blanchard passes it. Gagnon's shot is deflected out of play by Pierre-Olivier Roy. And watch out for Eric Uba. Nine power play goals as he steps onto the ice. For the Patriot, you got to keep an eye on this guy. Make sure that you don't give him anything as he's going to set up in his notorious one-timer position. Frateroli taking the face off against Litzaliang. Stoppage immediately. Now it'll be hard to stop these shots, right? Because Uba's so low at the blue, or so high at the blue line. You just got to make sure that there's nobody there to get to score on those secondary chances in the slot. Walford takes the face off win at the middle. Passes it off. Underneath. Oh, huge chance. Went right through the skate of Galanto. That shot from Frateroli misses wide. Uba tries throwing it on that. That's blocked by Litaliani, who clears the zone. Great work by Samuel Litaliani, who goes for a change. Yeah, you really want a player close to Uba. Make sure you can't get those shot offs. Just block that lane. You know, force them to go somewhere else. Force someone else to score on the power play. Rulo throws it around the boards. Galant battling for it with Edouard Cunway. And it's able to be cleared by David Noel this time. Another quick change for the Patriot. Galant takes it on the left wing. His pass intercepted by Frenette. He's going to just dump it, clear it away a little. And Uba now positioned on the opposite side. Rulo down the right side. Uba tries going behind. It was slowed down. It was halted a little. Galant's pass will get back barely to Maxime Blanchard. Blanchard in the middle of the ice from the point. Looking for Uba. Uba waits, shoots on the second attempt. He fakes the one timer, but it was blocked. Doesn't go through. Or it was that or a save by Gravel. The Patriot clear the zone again. A good kill so far by the Patriot. Not really giving them anything. A couple of one-timer shots, but cleared away right away. So it's a good start right now for the penalty kill. There's a clearance by Lozon. Uard takes it down the right wing. Noel pinching him into the boards. And Felix Lafrance skates it around. Dumont trying to chase it. Ford keeps it in. The penalty over. Belzile at the point. Shot covered and swallowed by Gravel. As these games facing these two, these 
this game will determine who faces the UNB Reds in the gold medal game tomorrow. CBC Sports, the home of University Sports in Canada, catch the gold medal game of this 2024 University Cup live from Toronto tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. It's a face-off to the right of Alexi Gravel. And it's won by L'Italien. What a strong face-off man he has been. 10 of 12 face-off wins in the opening game of the tournament. And it's just so important to have players that can win you draws because, you know, whether it's situational, whether in your own zone or the offensive zone, you're able to clear the puck out or you're able to get a scoring opportunity. It goes a long way into the game. Alexandre Gagnon knocked down by Simon Lafrance, showing he can do it physically, almost creates a turnover. Italien in the neutral zone. His pass to Lafrance misses, and it's recovered by Ford. Simon Lafrance. He can score, but he certainly laid the body, or he certainly can lay the body, as we saw against Moncton. He was throwing a few hits around. Rafa Numazansoa behind his own net. Six minutes to go in the opening frame. Only nine shots total, but one of them has been a goal. Lafrance... Angles it back, causes a turnover. Fortin, he's in all alone. Three players racing back. Stick save by Gravel. Looked like he was trying to go five hole. Certainly was looking to go five hole. Maybe trying to fool Gravel. Maybe his eyes were looking in the top corners. But with Gravel not biting, able to shut the butterfly and keep it from going five hole. Clearance goes out of play. It'll be a face off to the right of Gravel again. Fortin taking it against Monroe Boucher. Monroe Boucher wins it. But they have it. Prouch shot scores! Mitchell Prouch! Oh, it was deflected by Xavier Fortin. We are tied. What a deflection by Prowse. Just a harmless shot from the point but it made it difficult for Gravel to pick it up after Prowse got the deflection and for McGill, yeah, that's all you need to do is keep things simple. Get pucks to the net. Obviously bodies were heading towards Gravel but Prowse able to get a stick on it and no chance for Gravel to read that deflection in time. Well that brings the McGill team alive once again. 1-1 and it's great to score five on five for McGill, you know. Huge boost of confidence, five on five, because they know how dangerous they are on the power play given the opportunity. There's a little push in the faceoff dot. Fournette taking the face off against Frateroli. Face off won by Fournette. Cournoyer. Uba drops it back. Ruo in the neutral zone. Dumps it in. Cornoyer. Roy. Kalen Gauthier dumps it in. It's going to be covered by Shank right away. Forte. Xavier Forte having a great start to the tournament. Score on the power play against U. BC Thunderbirds and now scores again against a Patriot. It's two goals in two games. If you take a look from the net cam view of this deflection, Gravel just missed it with his glove. That small little deflection can just change the course of everything when that puck is coming at you. Five minutes to go in the opening frame. Faceoff is won by the Redbirds. Felix Lafrance trying to keep it in. He does. Boulette. To Felix Lafrance. Lozon sends it around the boards. Noel just sends it right back to Lozon. Lozon on the far side. Knocks it back to Noel. Noel to Lozon. Lozon throws it on net. That one turned away. At least deflected into the far corner. Noel. Kalen Gauthier. His shot blocked. Doesn't get through. Xavier Fortin. Gets it, 
and will pass it ahead. Mathieu Gagnon down the right side. His shot blocker save by Gravel. Willette. And I believe that's Fortin battling for it on the far side. And it's blown down. The ref's trying to see some, some action. So if the puck clearly set the tone, if you're going to hold up for the puck for at least five seconds, we're going to blow it dead. Zach Galon. I believe that is. We'll be taking the face off against Samuel L'Italien. Won by L'Italien. And Jeremy Martin trying to clear it. He eventually does after a pass. Martin. Baudouin. Drops it. Rafa Nomazen saw it taken down after a huge hit by Galan. Baudouin on the near side. Plays it against the boards. Tries sending it around the net, but miscommunication. L'Italien had gone to front of the net instead of behind it. Walford can't clear the zone. Baudouin picks it up in the face-off circle. Jeremy Martin down on the ice, slow to get up. He'll get the puck right as he gets up and still hasn't fully adjusted. Sends it wide, almost just ushers it wide. Baudouin, he scored the first goal for UQTR in the quarterfinals. There's a turnover. Wow. And a stoppage behind the play. Shoving match between Jeremy Martin. I can't believe they blew that dead. And Mitchell Prouse. You know, a potential two-on-one for McGill. And the referee blows it dead. Because two players going at it. Personally, I would have just waited after the two-on-one transpired, then blown it down. Unlucky for the Redbirds as we take a look at the goal once again the deflection from Fortin and on the other end for Shank with no stick La France top shelf no chance it's four on four going to the box Mitchell Prouse the Mitchell Prouse for the Redbirds and And Jeremy Martin for the Patriot. A steal in for net. Turn aside. Lewis Puck. Rouen knocked down. He gets it off, I think. Shanks just keeps it out. Yeah, it was a good play by Uba. Playing defense there. Making sure there was no goal being scored on the rebound. I saved the goal, Curtis. Quite possibly an icing call. It will be a face-off in the offensive zone for the Patriot. It'll be interesting to see who can really control the play here four on four. So take a look at the replay of this potential chance, just outbodying the defender and rebound. There's Uba checking up on Hua, making sure he couldn't get the shot off cleanly. And, you know, I don't think Shank would have been there if Hua was all alone. Goes on, wins the face off. Shot from the point, turned aside by Shank. Felix Lafrance drops it. Cournoyer on the right side, skates towards the middle. Thought about shooting this time. He does. He scores. It gets through. Edouard Cournoyer, the rookie, gives the Patriot the lead. And just the perfectly placed point shot for Cournoyer. A screen in front of Shank, and that's what you got to do. You, you know, UQTR knows how well Shank played in the game against UBC, so obviously they're going to get people in front as we take a look at the replay. Sort of Cornwallier faking the shot, looking for a new lane. He finds it. Lausanne in front there, screening Shank, and this puck goes five hole. Yeah, heck of a screen by Felix Lausanne, who really does it all. He was the Guy Carbono Trophy winner in the QMJHL for best defensive forward. He scored the overtime winner to win the Queen's Cup a couple of years ago, and there he gets the screen and helps cause the goal to give the Patriot the lead again. I mean, it's so important to have players like Lazon who can be that two-way forward, get in front of the goalies, screen goalies, you know. Noel, his point shot def takes a couple deflections and misses wide. He's a, he's a big part of this Patriot team. 
Absolutely, also an assistant captain. In his third year, had 17 points in 19 games. But let's talk about the goal scored. Eduardo Cornway. Yeah, Cornway, just a great move at the blue line. Adjusted himself because he realized he didn't have the shot lane. Then he found it and just perfectly sent it on net. And it went squeaked five hole past Shank. Cornway, the captain of Ruin Noranda in 2023. Like we said, almost an all-star C- all star QMJHL team. So many captains and assistants for the back in the queue on this roster. No shortage of intangibles. And just experience this team has. Yeah, he had a great season, Curtis, as a rookie. 18 points as a defenseman in 28 games. Corn- Showing off all of his talents there. Cornoyer to La France. Lausanne. Back to Felix La France. In short side. He couldn't get the shot off. Lausanne knocked down. Tried passing it back, but no one was there. Martin was staying, staying back on defense. La France. Felix La France. Another steal in the neutral zone. Cornoyer just angles it back for Noel. Minute 15 to go. 2-1. to one, UQTR leads. Italian flips it ahead. Baudouin on the chase. Up against Pavan. Dumont. Baudouin. L'Italien. Gauthier on the right side. His shot misses wide after a deflection by the blocker of Shank. So I guess that's really just a save. Yeah, I think Gauthier purposely shot that looking for the tip there by Wallet. He saw him in front in the net. Just missed his stick. Start the other way. Dumont. Uard cuts in. Backhanded. Just missed wide. In tight. It was Belzil. Patriot to have it in the final 12 seconds. Throwing it on net. Knocked down. Looks like that will be a penalty to the Red Birds. Yeah, obviously McGill, we talk about how undisciplined this Patriot team was this season, but McGill themselves, six in the OUA, just behind them, or just ahead of them, I should say, taking 102 penalties this season. You take a look at the replay of this boarding call. And just, you know, you gotta be smart here in these situations. You know that player's vulnerable. Back of the uh, back, the numbers are showing, and then you hit him. It's not a smart penalty to take, especially this late into the first period. 11 seconds for UQTR to try to get something before they head to the locker room. Face off won by Frenette. Cournoyer, La France on the right side, sends it in front. LaFrance trying to put it behind him. Roy in front nearly put it in. But Shank keeps the door shut. That'll do it for the opening frame as a stick goes flying at the end of it. But it will be a 2-1 to lead for the Patriot through one period. Yeah. Curtis, for the Redbirds, you got to be smarter right now in the second period. Taking very much bad penalties against this Patriot team. They're just hurting themselves, shooting themselves in the foot, you can say, because already down a goal. Now they're going to be on the penalty kill to start the second period. And certainly not the way that they wanted things to go to start this game. And they're still very much in it. It's only, they're only down by one. Yeah, it's a lead for the Patriot and their coach, Uber, probably Marketing you bet probably pretty happy so far. We'll see just how happy he is as he set to be interviewed by French color commentator Dylan Baker. You'll be hearing in a couple seconds. But you know, it's avoidable. Very avoidable for McGill right now. You know, they it could be a tie game right now, but they keep putting the Patriot on the power play. And they're definitely going to discuss that if I'm McGill's head coach, so keep it five on five if you're McGill. And now we throw it to Dylan, who is got an interview right now. Dylan, to you. 
head coach of the UQTR Patriot. It's uh, David Brosseau, the play-by-play -play broadcaster for Radio-Canada, asking Marc-Étienne Hubert what he thought of his team's first period. Hubert uh, said he expected this start for his team. He thinks that his, uh, his team played really well. It was pretty quick in that first period, and he's really happy with his special team's performance. He thinks it's uh, it's been a big factor for him and his squad throughout this season, in particular in that first period. David Brosseau asking about the power play, saying it's the fourth power play that Marc-Étienne Hubert's squad has had the chance to uh, obtain in that first period. And he's asking, David Brosseau asking uh, how it impacted his bench management. Marc-Étienne Hubert uh, is saying that... Uh, McGill did a really good job in uh, on the penalty kill, and we mentioned that on the broadcast. He said that they're going to have to adjust on the power play because of how good McGill was on uh, on the penalty kill, pardon me. And uh, Marquette Tenubau says they're lucky to be leading after one period and come into the second, leading by a goal by a score of 2-1. to one. Thanks to... Coach Hubert for giving us that. It's 2-1. to one. UQTR leads McGill in the semifinals at the 2024 Men's Hockey Championship. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're watching U-Sports on CBC. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe C'est la gloire, le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. The sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. <laughs>
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Change was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back to the Mattamy Athletic Center. UQTR leads McGill 2-1 to one in the semifinals of the University Cup Men's Hockey Championship on CBC. Curtis Coleman alongside Matt Smith bringing you the game. And it was a very solid first period after a rather slow start. Yeah, it was a solid period for both teams, five on five. The pace of play was back and forth. But, you know, most importantly for McGill, if you're McGill head coach David Urquhart, you want to relay the message to your team that, guys, we need to stay disciplined. This is a really good team. Five on five, five on four. We can't afford to go down by a couple goals. And, you know, they start on the penalty kill in the second period. So, you know, kill that penalty and then keep it five on five. Yeah, that will do them a lot of good because you've been saying throughout the period, not some not great penalties being taken by McGill. We take a look at the highlights of the first period. Underway in the semifinals. And it was back and forth, Curtis. You know, physical from the start. Like we said, the Patriots, not the biggest team, but they certainly play like they are. And Miguel, not afraid to throw the body as well. And you have to. It's the Nationals. You know, every team's going to look to be physical, and you're going to have to match it um, and, you know, get your presence to be felt. Both goalies standing on their head, Shank and Gravel, making some big stops. But like we saw with Shank, the goal that went through 5-4, it's because he screened. Gravel, the, you know, the... The shot through the screen deflection. These are the type of things that it's going to take to beat these type of guys when they're playing at their best. So we want to get people in front of the goalie's eyes and shots like Cornwallis from the point find their way home. So we saw that in the first period. Yeah, first goal from Simon Lafrance. Open things up on the power play. But then the point shot right off the face of Fortin. There's about three guys there in front of Gravel, and uh, including the deflection it's impossible for him to pick the puck up last second as we saw you know he just saw it go past him so that's going to be certainly a game plan going into the second but for mcgill they're going to have to get through this penalty kill first to make sure that they can get back in this game only down by one yeah it 
is 2-1 to one after that goal by Cournoyer. He is pumped for it, the rookie. And we take a look at the scoring summary. It was La France, then Fortin, then Cournoyer. Yeah, and all three players showing up big time in this tournament. La France doing some amazing work. Already six points so far. And Cournoyer, like you said, continuing that amazing rookie season. And Fortin having a great start as well. Scored last night on the power play and now scored that deflection goal to only cut the lead in by half. Well, to cut it to another team and another player, Elijah Roberts in his third year with the TMU Bold. His work in the classroom and on ice has been has led him to a successful career in the OHL and U Sports. But the most important legacy is his young family. Footsteps is Elijah's story about hockey, fatherhood, and race. Um, things that you can't change or stressing about things that are inevitable, then you know that's where you start to kind of see the faults. Whereas I just try and, you know, if things are gonna happen, just try and do my best to you know, enjoy it and, and be prepared. I started skating when I was five. I started playing on an organized team when I was six. Uh, instantly fell in love with it. As I started to get older, I started to become a little bit better of a player. And, you know, I stopped necessarily thinking so much about the NHL and the end goals and, and more. I just kind of started enjoying the process of things. But, you know, I think this year um, probably been the most special season for me. You know, it was my first full season as a father. So it's definitely, it's been an adjustment. How's it here? Still going on. They might have just got you being on the phone when Kylo picked up. But you don't have to use it if you don't want. So they're recording you right now? Yep. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been great just watching, you know, seeing her grow. Um, and now she's at a point where she's she's 14 months now and she's she's crawling and talking and she's she's all over the place. So, you know, it's a whole new challenge, but, um, you know, being a dad's been the greatest thing. Oh, she's gonna dump it sooner than later. But, you know, all this preparation and reading and all that, it's one thing, but when, when she's actually there and she's in front of you, um, it's completely different. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. 
Nike, just do it. Fender. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center as we prepare to start the second period in the semifinals of the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey Championship on CBC. Curtis Coleman, Matt Smith bringing you the action, and UQTR with a 2-1 lead over their Quebecois rivals in McGill. Yeah, Curtis, the rivalries, they're only about an hour and a half drive from Montreal to Trois-Rivières, so... The cross-province rivalry is certainly alive here at the start of the second period. Both teams playing some great hockey, Curtis. You know, checking all their assignments, making sure no secondary chances are going through. It's just for McGill. The penalties that they're taking are not smart ones. And so they're going to have to limit that, keep this game 5-on-5. Five five. But both teams so far playing really well. Now, speaking of penalties, at the end of the first, there was a penalty called against McGill. So... They will be down a man for a minute 30 to begin the second. And this is a huge penalty for the Redbirds to kill off. Already down by one. You don't want to go down by a couple. Frenette dances through. Look at Frenette. He almost just misses wide there. He tried going end to end and nearly deked out the whole team. Noel to Simone LaFrance. LaFrance scored the first goal in the game on the power play. Noel to Frenette. Frenette on the left side. Underneath. Félix Lafrance right in the slot. Just in front in the face-off circle, turned aside by Shank. His shot was low to the ground, and Shank was all over it. Yeah, like we saw against Moncton, UQTR on the power play. Umbrella power play setup. So that man in the slot was, we take a look at the replay for net, cutting through the defense, trying to get the pass through, but it deflects off the defender's sk uh, uh, stick, excuse me, and a good save by Shank to pick up that weird puck in the air. Noel, after the face-off win, he's skating towards the middle. Frenette on the left side. Frenette back to Noel. Thought about shooting, but he decides to pass it back to Frenette on the left side again. Frenette in the face-off circle. Brois tries passing it in front. McGill was all over that. Frenette sends it behind. LaFrance, a backdoor pass. Brois in front. Shanks got it, and it's flipped high. Clearly, he didn't have it. Chaotic scramble. A lot of bodies in front. Dumont walks in. Dumont deflected out of play by Noel. Patriot thought that play was offside. The refs let it go. It's very close. A good opportunity for Dumont. But it was deflected high in the net. And right now, good kill by the Redbirds. They certainly don't want to go down a couple and have to score against the goaltender Gravel right now because that's a hard task as is. You can just ask Moncton as they outshot the Patriot last game. Rafael Manzanzoa to l'Italien. 10 seconds to go in the penalty. Miguel likely to kill it off. And that'll do it. Five on five again. Cournoyer got the leading goal right now. Pass to Ouellette on the wrong side of his stick. On the wrong side of his body. Cornoyer. Rafano Mazenzoa. L'Italien snaps it up. Just misses wide to the left. Ford on the far side. Hit, but able to get it out. Mathieu Gagnon. Down the middle. Deflected away by Rafano Mazenzoa, who's had a great tournament defensively so far. Gagnon. Dumps it in. Frateroli chases it against Cornoyer. Frateroli comes away with it. He passes it to Uva, but it's intercepted by Willette. Willette, Rafa Numazansoa on the left side. Maxime Blanchard backhands it around in his own end. Uva on the near side. And it's dumped back in by the Patriot. Good 
zone exit so far for both teams. Uba, cross ice pass in the air. Frateroli sends it behind the net. Rouleau looking for Uba, misses his stick. Here comes Monroe Boucher. You certainly know it's going to be a good hockey game when both teams can effectively clear their zones and transition into the opposing defensive zone. And when both teams are doing it, it means offense is just going to keep on going in this game. La France, he gets a break. In shot, deflected wide by Walford. As Prowse had a bad turnover, there's going to be another penalty to McGill, though. Yeah, Curtis, this is four penalties now so far given to Les Patriotes. And like I said, they got a score on Gravel. Oh, you've said the numbers, 972 save percentage. You go down by a couple, you know, it's going to be hard to beat a goaltender playing that well. As an Habs fan growing up watching a guy like Carey Price for so many years, I know that feeling of being able to rely on your goaltender all game. That was a bad turnover by Prouse. Just skipped under his stick, and then he sends Susie into the boards. It's going to be a power play for UQTR. A penalty kill for Miguel has been good to start this game, but they're going to have to continue into the second right now. Noel to Frenet. Back to Noel. Don't think he was expecting that pass. He had exited the zone quickly. He's back in it. Simone France on the right side. Takes it back. La France for Frenet. Frenet tries dangling through, but Belzeal was there. And it's cleared, it, cleared away by Mathieu Gagnon. And, of course, Gravel comes out to play it, as he does often. Frenet. Already 30 seconds killed off. Going for Roy. Noel fires it in. Dumont, stretch pass. It's a break for Galon. Galon taken down by Noel. Blown down. Freeze. As Galon goes crashing into the boards. Yeah, that was a good defensive play. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific from the Queen from Queen's University in Kingston. All the action for U Sports Men's Volleyball Gold is exclusively on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. That's what both of these teams are doing. They're looking to chase the glory, and that glory being the ability to, or the chance to take down UNB and end their perfect season. They're going, they're chasing their own kind of glory. Uh, wouldn't that be just all the glory, Curtis, to beat a team like UNB in the finals? Cornoyer's shot deflected wide, and you, re you, you know why this guy is so successful in a rookie defenseman is because of his skating ability at the point. He's able to quickly find new shooting lanes with his ability to adjust the direction he's going to shoot the puck in. Sometimes he can do it with fakes and feints and it's very much effective. 20 seconds to go in the penalty. Raffino Mazzansoa passes it to l'Italien. Cournoyer down the left side, turns around, backhands it across the ice. Maverick Gauthier, 10 in the penalty to go. Gauthier battled hard by Ford. Alexandre Gagnon gets it out. Mathieu Gagnon starts down the left side. Gagnon cuts across the ice. Alexandre Gagnon from a bad angle. Turned aside by Gravel and he holds on. Yeah, Gagnon elected to shoot that on net. Obviously not thinking it's going to beat Gravel. But it's going to be a face-off now in the Petriot zone. And here comes the favor line. The Poirier line, excuse me. And Fortin. Fortin, Bennett, and Poirier. Fortin taking the face off against Monroe Boucher. Blanchard. 
Sends it into the corner. A lot of bodies going down. Blanchard at the point. His shot blocked by Susi. He's able to flip it away. Ludovic Susi. High stick called. Well, both teams currently five on five. You can tell the pace of play is clearly going back and forth. So when the offense is showing up as a defensive unit, you got to make sure that these shots, these low pad rebounds, they're cleared out of the way. And they're doing a good job doing so, as we haven't seen many opportunities on the secondary scoring opportunities. But if when they are there, defense is doing a good job making sure no one's left alone in front of the net. Gravel won the weight, race for the puck against Uald, but here's Dumont. Dumont's pass right through Uald's legs. He's got to shoot that one, Curtis. Definitely has to shoot that one that close in. Felix Lafrance starts the other way, three on two. His pass cross ice goes to Simon Lafrance. He centers it, but Dumont picks it up, skating back. Prouse tries shoveling it out. He can't. It's intercepted. Simon Lafrance. Uald got in there to whack at his stick. His couldn't follow through, couldn't get a shot away. And when Gravel is playing so well, it makes players like Dumont second guess themselves when they have the open shot and then they elect to pass instead. Lozon to Cournoyer. Roy down the right side, back to Cournoyer. He's entering the rush. Great feed, save made. That was Dumoulin in tight. Shank shuts the door. Cournoyer. Dumoulin. Pass for Roy. He's going to send a Redbird into the boards. Lozon in the near corner. Drops it. Rafano Mazensoa. Dumoulin shot. Bounces over. It's a goal. William Dumoulin, the only non Quebecois player on the team. Strikes and it's 3 1 for Trois Rivières. Yeah, Dumoulin just making himself open in the high slot area, able to receive the pass from the defenseman and just shoots that one on it. He knows his teammates are going to be in front of Shang, so why not just take a shot? As we look at the replay, the shot hits Shank and just goes right into the air, back into the net. Unlucky for Shank, but very fortunate for Dumoulin and Le Patriot. 3-1, UQTR leads. Fortin. Alexandre Gagnon. Almost turns it over, Mathieu Gagnon. Down the right side. Pass to Alexandre Gagnon. Backhand scores! Just like that, McGill strikes back. Oh, here we go. I got a feeling this is going to be ty what a, like type of the good game that we're going to see as Miguel answers right back. Seems to be the narrative of this game so far. Let's take a look at the replay. He On the rush, being able to find his teammate and Gagnon. Able to score that one on the backhand. It's very hard for a goaltender to pick up those backhand shots. You don't really see them a lot in practice to start with. So in game situations, shots like that with no screen or nobody in it, they're going to go in. Because like I said, it's hard to pick up on where it's going to go. Just like that, before the UQTR third goal was even announced, it's already 3-2 to two again. Susi. I got to give a shout out to this McGill Redbirds band. Making the trip, bringing all their instruments. No other team the Nationals has done this. It's and it's, cool to see. it's pretty fun. I'm tapping my feet to a couple of their set songs. Uva in the near corner. Drops it. Walford. His shot accidentally blocked by Uva and then blocked by Susie. Yeah, that shot almost looked like a Plinko game. Just couldn't get all the way to the top. It cleared the zone pretty fast. Kellen Gauthier turns it over behind his own net. Prouse passes it. Uba. Uba 
Daly, he centers it for Bennett. Save made by Gravel. Ford, Belzeal, his shot tipped, save made by Gravel. It was a slow shot, but Uba sped it up a little on the deflection. Pulled line, incidentally plays it out of play. For Miguel, the confidence certainly back right now. He's got another couple more opportunities after that goal. CV Sports, the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory as we get a timeout by the Patriot. And McGill, you know, when you think of U Sports, you can't help but forget these McGill Redbirds because the history is there and they've won national championships they've won Queen Cups but in a conference like the OUA they tend to get underlooked when you think of those teams like TMU and Brock and UQTR but they're a really good team I mean they went 21 and 7 and they're the 7th seed as they beat Brock in the bronze medal game of the OUA. Yeah, and they finished ahead of UQTR in the regular season. That's why they did have home ice advantage. Fortunately, it didn't work out for them, but if we take a look at that replay to Moulin, his shot bounces off Shank and over, and then right back almost immediately, Alexandre Gagné, full backhand, full commitment. Makes no mistake. Galant. His long pass, Rafa Nomazenso racing Uard Jr. And Uard is the first one there. Waving off the icing. Felix Lafrance, his pass crunched by Galant. Afterwards, Walford to Blanchard. Nearly turns it over Shank. Had to pounce on it before Pierre Olivier Roy got to it. So anyway, you can feel physicality in this game as these hits against these boards are heard throughout the arena and they might look innocent on CBC Gem or CBC.ca streams but here they sound very aggressive Frenette taking the face off against Frateroli to the left of Shank Belzio gets it out Uba Shot misses wide to the left. It's a good idea to shoot when there was a screen there. We'll let Simon LaFrance, he does a little dangle. LaFrance fans on his shot. Easy pad save for Shank. Same Back the other France. way. Pass misses everyone. That'll be an icing. Just a couple of plays there using defender as a screen and shooting it on the goalie. Faceoff will be in the Redbird zone. I believe UQTR, UQTR thought it was going to be a TV timeout, but can't do that after an icing. Frenette taking it against Frateroli. One by Frenette. Dancing through Simon Lafrance. Frenette backhands it wide. A weak backhand. Frenette take, deflects the pass from La France, La France knocks it down. Frateroli can't get it out. Frenette dumps it back in. Ford. Hit by Felix La France. Bit light on the hit. Noel. Pass over to Simon La France. Gauthier. Tipped in by Baudouin. Ford. Gagnon on the right side. Noel intercepts that. Cornoyer. Get it out around Frateroli. Noel gets it back in his own end. Cornoyer on the far side. Long stretch pass. Dumoulin. 
flips it into the opposite corner of the ice. Lozon battling for it against two Redbirds. Noel back at the point. Cornoyer, his shot th doesn't get through. That's blocked. Noel, his shot misses wide. Takes a bounce on the ricochet off the net. And a pass from UQTR accidentally exits the zone. Noel dumps it back in. Fortin. Gagnon. Monroe Boucher in there. You, McGill comes away with it. Walford at the right side. Fortin skating towards the middle. Throws it on net. Save made by Gravel. Big save from Alexi Gravel. And that will have us throw to a TV timeout. It's 3 to 2. UQTR leads McGill. We'll be right back. You're watching U Sports on CBC. Ça se regarde en direct. Soyez au cœur de l'action avec les web diffusions en direct d'événements sportifs. Welcome back inside the Marmee Athletic Center. 3 to 2, UQTR leads Miguel, Curtis Coleman, Matt Smith, bringing you the action from this semi final matchup. The winner facing UNB for the University Cup. The yeah, Akron is about halfway through this period. More than halfway. Both teams continuing their strong play five on five. Can't really say one team is one sided or better or playing better as there have been chances for both teams on both ends. Right now it's just a game of special teams that separates them. And for the Patriots up one, they certainly do not want to give any chance for McGill to get back in this game on the power play. Face off won by Lozon. Uar can't keep it in. Jeremy Martin puts it off the far boards to himself. He manages to almost come away with it. Luckily, it does go to Anthony Monroe Boucher. Near side, Lozon tried the one timer, couldn't get it off. Monroe Boucher regroups at in the neutral zone. Back into his own end. Rafa Nomazanso on the near side. Martin deflects it out of play into the penalty box. Well, even the puck's getting called for penalties. Not just Miguel, but strong play defensively by the Redbird forwards. Stopping any shots from getting through, any opportunities. As now the faceoff will be at center ice. Italian taking the faceoff against Frateroli. Frateroli's going to win it. Three for 15 on faceoffs in the quarterfinals. So, air hoping he takes a big improvement. L'Italien turns it over behind the net. Centering pass from Rouleau. Went on a stick, but then rolled over afterwards. Rouleau gets it back, drops it to Maxime Blanchard. Pavon, his shot, gloved down, falls to the ice, and then Gravel covers it. And when you're two even teams, Curtis. It's going to be the small things that sort of separate you. Like we talked about the power play, the goaltenders, but the face-offs, like you said. Hopefully, these players that are struggling with the face-offs are going to need to step up because a face-off loss could be the difference maker in a tie game. Now, yeah, that's a face-off win is how McGill got their first goal, remember. Now they have an opportunity. 
Federally kicked out immediately. Trullo taking it against L'Italien. L'Italien wins it. Cornoyer sends it around the boards. Baudouin gets it out. Susi dumps it in. It's Rouleau. Uba off the boards. Rouleau walks into the offensive zone, just dumps it in behind the net. Noel. Noel de Soucy. Cournoyer. Stretch pass to Baudouin on the near side. That misses Dumont. Trying to start a rush the other way. Galan in the face off circle. Centering pass. Mathieu Gagnon had a player all over him. I believe that was Soucy who was there on the defense. Mathieu Gagnon takes it behind the net on the forehand. Gagnon. Walford gets it back at the point. Walford tries sending it through. Gagnon was tied up by David Noel. Couldn't get a shot off. Six minutes to go in the second frame. Taylor Ford, captain of the Redbirds. Pass to Walford. Walford's long pass. He goes in the middle of a change. That'll be an icing. No one really wanted to touch it at the risk of a too many men penalty. David Noel, he can score with the 12 goals on the season, but he sure as heck is a defensive juggernaut as well, making sure none of these passes are getting through. Let's take a look at the replay. Cornoyer, even for his size, he's not afraid to lay out the big hits. And it's certainly great when you have such a player who can skate so well on the blue line, you know, quarterback a power play, but is also so physical down low. Lozon taking it against Galan. Lozon sent away. Simon La France against Galan now. Draw one by La France. Lozon sends it behind. La France on the near corner. Ring around the boards. And Gauthier got turned around by his own bench, I think. Got a stick caught there. Walford, Ford, cross ice pass to Gagnon. Gagnon on the right side. Alexandre Gagnon just hit by Martin as he dumps it in. Martin down the left side. He dumps it in. Monroe Boucher tries centering it. Didn't get a piece of that puck. Gagnon passes it out. Fortin. Walford turns a corner, drops it to Prouse. Prouse back to Walford. Walford shot, doesn't get through. Prouse gets it back though. Prouse in the middle of the ice, sends it, knocked down, scores! Alexandre Gagnon, tie game! Gagnon going straight for the eyes of Gravel, making sure he's screened. But Cornouaille, not defending the stick of Gagnon in front of his net, so the rebound's there. And we're, I was talking about how the players in defense were doing such a good job limiting those secondary scoring opportunities, but right there, Cornway just missed his assignment, and Gagnon able to bury as we take a look at the replay. It's a shot from the point. Cornway trying to push away Gagnon, but you got to get to his stick. You could do all you want push, uh, physically pushing him, but Gagnon stands his ground. And his stick was loose, able to bury the rebound. Well, Alexandre Gagnon had six goals in the season prior to this. Two goals on the night in the biggest game of the season. Pretty good performance, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it looks to be a nail-biter. Seems like it's going to be one of those games. Blanchard tries keeping it in. He does, but it's out of play. CBC Sports, the home of university sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific from McMaster University in Hamilton. All the action for U Sports Women's Volleyball is exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Alberta just won the semifinals 
against Manitoba. 3-2 fights that thriller there. And UBC takes on Acadia in the second semifinals at 9. So you got a bit of time. Keep tuning into this one because it's a heck of a game. You want to... And you want to see the end of it. I mean, all the McGill fans are fired up after that goal. Even the tuba player for the band, he hasn't been able to sit. Still on his feet. That's got to be tough holding a tuba. Noel. It's a turnover. Belzeal, his shot, gloved down by Gadevel. 3.59 to go. What a it, game so far. Five on five. Curtis back and forth. Both teams getting opportunities but most of these goals now that, we, that, have, that we have seen have been going through off of the screen or people in front of the net. So take a look at the replay and easy glove save there for Gravel. As a defender as we saw with Cornwall we got to make sure that we are stick checking as Gagnon was able to bury that one home. Fernet loses the puck Kellen Gauthier, cross-ice pass off the skate of Simone Lafrance. Not in the perfect spot. It went off his right skate and into the corner. McGill had it. Fournette centers it in front, and Lafrance had no one to pass it to, so he passes it right back, and it causes a turnover. Rouleau falls to the ice, tries centering it after falling, but it's a very slow pass. Uba drops to Wolf, to Prouse to Walford. Uba in the slot, in the face-off circle, shot. Turned aside by Gravel. Yeah, good play by Miguel, moving the puck around. You know, getting defenders out of place. As we saw, Uba with an opportunity, a good, great opportunity, but Gravel able to shut the door. Take a look at that one again. Gravel right there, standing his ground, making sure the rebound doesn't get away from him. Cradles that and Alex to stop play. It's L'Italiani taking the face off against Drew Bennett. Bennett thrown out. Alexandre Gagnon, two goal scorer, taking it. Blanchard, shot blocked by Susi. Susi pins Blanchard up against the board. Gagnon throws it towards the goal. Bennett. Daly. Maverick Gauthier from behind his own net. Long pass down the ice. Picked off by Blanchard. Daly just wires it in. Lozon. Rafano Mazansoa. Backdoor pass to Dumoulin who clears it. Susi down the left wing. Lausanne racing against Belzile. Clean exit there by McGill. Transition now. Dumont, right side. Rafa Mazansoa misses the hit, but he ends up getting it on the second goal. Second go. Galant shot. Save made by Gravel. Loose puck, Belzile. Just misses the net to the left. Belzile gets it back. Galant, point shot blocked by Susi. For Gravel's sake, he's lucky Gagnon wasn't there a second earlier because he would have buried that rebound, taking the lead. Let turns, tries firing it. Still got it in between his skates. Could be a whistle here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, fans are here to pay to watch some hockey. They want to see some. They don't want to see people holding the puck. As UQTR Patriot right now, Curtis, near the end of the period, sort of just trying to push back the surge of offense that McGill is bringing to them. I think they're just trying to survive the period at this point. McGill has all the momentum right now. They've scored two unanswered. And UQTR is now being outshot. Yeah, weird start to the tournament for UQTR. You know, no one expected them to get outshot by Moncton. Now being outshot by McGill. Monroe Boucher dumps that in. But Walford. In my humble opinion, McGill, much better team than Moncton. 
Well, they have a win in the tournament to show for it. So you might have a point for net. Monroe Boucher passes it off the boards, trying to get it to himself. Tied up by Walford, doesn't get to it. Fournette gets it instead. He tries a spinorama pass, then sent on net by Cournoyer, gloved down by Shank. Yeah, it was a good save by Shank because he had his teammate who are down on the ground. So, you know, depending on how low Shank was going, he would have been screened by his own player, but able to pick up where the puck was going. Yeah, just a lot of a lot of whiffs on that play from McGill as a team. Throughout on the ground, a couple missed hits. Well, when players are standing in front of you, the goaltender, what do they do? They tend to go low, right? See through the legs. But when you got your own player on the ground screening you, it makes it much harder to pick up a puck shot from the point. Rulo directs the clearance by Ford. And a lot of physicality. And we enter the final minute of the second. Felix LaFrance pass goes right under the stick of Simon LaFrance. And McGill on the attack again. Uba. Kellen Gauthier turns it over. In front. Cross ice pass. It's in. McGill leads. What a break for McGill. It wasn't a great shot. But because the defender of the Patriots, Gauthier, ran into his goaltender, that one was able to squeak through. And it is Rouleau. The star on this Redbird team, 50 points in 42 games in the regular season. But you see, it's not the greatest shot, right? But it doesn't matter. It squeaks through because Gauthier runs his goalie trying to stop the pass. Finds a way in. And now they're up 4-3 late in the second period. They were down 3-1, to one, have made the full comeback and taken the lead before the end of the period. There's a pass, in on goal, it's in the other way! Tie game just like that! Seconds later, Matt! Oh my! Willette loses his stick after scoring, but he is pumped! So I got goosebumps, Curtis. I mean, for me and you, it's been a tough tournament as we had a couple blowouts, but now we finally got a back and forth game and man, the atmosphere in this arena is through the roof. You go from the McGill band playing in celebration to silence nope. all of a sudden. Juba player sitting down finally. It's Willette. They saw Milo Willette, the hero in the Queen's Cup final. The man from Trois Rivières himself. Evening things up before the end of the frame, just seconds after McGill took the lead. Lozon dumps it in with 20 seconds to play. Rouleau dumps it back the other way. Final 10 seconds of the period. Walford fakes the shot, gets it back, throws it on that blocker save by Gravel. That'll do it. For the second, back and forth, we continue to go. It was two to one through one, and through two, it is four to four. Oh my, what a game so far. Just back and forth, great play five on five. Now that the power plays and penalties are, we didn't really see any in the second period at all. So just pure team versus team. Five on five, and then it started 2 1. Now it's 4 4. Willette scoring the late tie, tying goal. And now it's going to be a tie game headed to the third period. A 4 4 game. Heck of a performance from both sides so far, keeping the fans on their feet. For pretty much the entirety, and so many momentum shifts. He had UQTR taking through only Den Alexandre Gagnon right the other way. If you take a look at the replay, this was McGill's goal late. Gotze running, Gravel shot was able to find its way in, but only a matter of seconds later, 
Curtis, right off the faceoff. Wallet able to pick up that turnover, or excuse me, Wallet able to take the pass from his teammate off the turnover. That was Baudouin. Yeah, and now we will throw it down to our French color commentator, Dylan Baker, who is with Thomas Belzile. David asking him once again for his impressions right, of that second period. A third, uh, how he's feeling about that second period, which was a pretty crazy one. It's high intensity, says Tama Bezil. Both teams giving everything that they have, and uh, he wants to see his McGill Redbirds bring the puck to the net a little bit more and crash Alexis Gravel's goal. David Brasso asking him what we can expect from uh, the third period for McGill with uh, lots of body checks and, and, and physical presence. Thomas Bez is saying if there will be the same intensity and uh, he's trying to issue a lot of body checks and create a, a physical presence that causes trouble for the for the Patriot de l'Ukutea. That's all for Thomas Bezil. Merci, Thomas, et merci, Dylan. Bit of French there for you. It is 4-4 four to four through two periods. You don't want to miss the end of this one. You're watching U Sports on CBC. Stick around. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. 
aconteceu. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and impact the planet. Welcome back inside the Mattamy Athletic Center. What a thriller we have on our hands. It is four to four through two periods on U Sports on CBC. Curtis Coleman, Matt Smith, bringing you this action. You can see the smile on Matt's face. This has been one heck of a game. Yeah, Curtis, I'm just excited. It's a close game, finally, that we get to do. Unfortunately, with the two other ones, it was a blowout. But, yeah, like you said, 4-4 heading into the third period. A lot of action in that second period. Started 2-1, and now it is 4-4. A couple goals from Gagnon. Uba scored. Wallet. And, you know, it has been back and forth, certainly 5-on-5. Five five. You would have to assume going into the third period that the refs are maybe going to put their whistles away unless it's a blatant call. So it's going to be interesting to see who excels at even strength going into that third period. It could be both teams, and it will come down to the wire, or maybe an OT cl a clash. Who knows? But a lot of action that second period as we take a look at the highlights of the second period. That great chance. Connor Fernand almost going end-to-end. -end. And, you know, these teams at this point, the defense is going to be crucial if you're playing that position. you got to make sure that people in front of the net are defended well. Their sticks are being checked up. As we saw, Gagnon was able to get one in front. Gagnon, de or Cornway defending, not able to defend the stick. So that's going to be, it's going to be the small things, the small fundamental defensive aspects of the game that they're going to have to be perfect on heading into this third period because the smallest mistake could lead to a goal in the back of your net and could lead to you being eliminated from this tournament. Well, three to two just like that. Seconds after UQGR took the 3-1 lead, it was three to two. Then seconds late, not seconds later, but a bit later on the rebound, Gagnon number two on the game. All of a sudden we're tied and it didn't end there for McGill. No, it did not. You know, they scored a second goal Uba on the one-timer, like I said, wasn't the perfect one-timer shot, but Gravel was hit by his own defender, Gautier, in the net. That puck was able to find its way through, and then seconds later off the faceoff, Boldoin capitalizing off the turnover, passing to Wallet, the hero in the Queen's Cup game, able to tie this game. As we take a look at the scoring summary, like we said, Gagnon with two goals, and then Uba on the one-timer, and then Milo Wallet seconds later to tie the game. This one's going to come down to the wire, Curtis, 4-4. You don't want to take a bad penalty and lose this to special teams, you know. Lose it with pride. Lose it 5-on-5. Five five. You know, you don't want to go home into the locker room and be like, ah, if we didn't give up that penalty, who knows what would have happened. So don't let that chance come to fruition. Make sure you stay out of the box. Well, unfortunately for them, only one of these teams can advance. And for that other team, they will face off against the TMU Bold. And one of the players on the Bold, Elijah Roberts, has thrived in the classroom and on ice. He's a third-year player, and he's had a very successful OHR and U Sports career. Here's part two of his story on fatherhood, hockey, and race and sports. I think the thing that works best for us is like we practice at 8 a.m. Um, so, you know, I'd go to practice. If I got class that day, I go to class. But usually I go to practice and I come home and she's only been awake for a couple hours and, you know, I get to spend the whole day with her. Yeah, it's been great just watching, you know, seeing her grow. Um, 
you know, you hear mothers and, and fathers say it before, but like it's a 24-7 job. Um, it's the best job. So, um, definitely a lot of sacrifices, um, but it's great. I love every second of that, and you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. For us to have a voice to talk about things and express how other athletes are feeling and how young black men are feeling, we thought that was super important to uh, talk about that. You know, I looked around when I first started playing, I was the only black kid there. You can ask anyone for the most part now, it's something that you notice from the time you start playing hockey. When I got to Niagara, that was what caused Akil and I to kind of start our podcast, Soul on Ice, the podcast. It's called Soul on Ice. Soul on Ice. Soul on Ice podcast. Right now, I think it's a, it's a really uh, important time for social change. We recognize that we have a lot of work to do. If kids can see that there's people that look like them in the league, that they may, that would probably incline them to be like, oh, I can do that too. If I if I use my voice and speak up, like it, there's an opportunity to reach someone. So looking looking at my, where I'm at now, it's uh, you know kind of something that I've uh, been focused on a little bit, just trying to give back and you know kind of create more of a positive space for for everyone. You know, there's a lot of people who don't want to see you win, but there's also people like me and other people like we want to see the next group of, of young uh, minority athletes like making the NHL and, and achieving their dreams. You know, just be happy with the way things go and, and, and don't think that it all needs to happen overnight because, you know, when it's meant to happen, it'll happen. I still love the game. Um, I just don't know if I had the same passion and drive for it now that I did before, which is which is okay. It's something I've accepted. I think we got a real opportunity to you know do something special. And uh, for me, with this being my last year of hockey, um, it would be a pretty cool way to go out to you know win a championship. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans proudly canadian isi live be there hey you sports fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the nike team collection visit the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection nike team Parcours inspirant. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by les championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport.
Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center. It's U Sports on CBC, the men's hockey championship semifinals between the McGill Redbirds and the UQTR Patriot, and we have been in for a treat in this one. Curtis Coleman, Matt Smith, having the privilege of bringing you this matchup. So we take a look at the stats through two periods. They are about as even as you can get. Oh, absolutely. This has just been a back-and-forth game. But obviously, McGill so far 0-3 on the power play versus 2-5 for five for UQTR. Now, for either team, you certainly don't want to take any penalty at this stage of the game. You want to keep it 5-on-5. Five five. You don't want to lose this one to special teams. So, you know, I'm liking the way both teams have been playing so far at even strength. They just got to continue at Keep it simple. The fundamentals. Pucks to net. Make sure the goalies are screened. Secondary chances. So, it's a good game so far. Yeah, for sure. You take a look at the save percentages. Not ideal for either team, but there have been some very quality chances. If you take a look at some of the top saves from tonight so far. Yeah, a lot of highlights to look at in the second period. UQTR, McGill, both having great A opportunities. Big saves from goaltenders, but others they were able to capitalize on. But the defense was doing great, limiting those secondary opportunities. Only a few times where there were some missed assignments. But as we saw late near the period is where all the action happened. And McGill was very much controlling play late. UQTR kind of just on their heels, it seemed, when Uba scored that goal. And then luckily, they're able to capitalize seconds later off the draw. Or else it would have been a 4-3 game for the Redbirds heading into the third period. But instead, Curtis, we got a tie game. 20 minutes to decide who will play UNB in the finals. Will it be the Redbirds or the Patriots? We find out now. Cournoyer in his own end. Flips it high up into the air and out. And Prouse knocks it down with his hand. It's blown down for a hand pass. Got to make sure that you got to get pucks in deep. Make sure that your four check can be effective to turn pucks over and set play up in your own end because the defense right now doing a good job trying to stop players from entering the zone on the rush. Luzon taking the face off against Alexandre Gagnon, or Maxime Gagnon, apologies. Ford on the, sends it off the near boards. Kalen Gauthier in the back the other way. Shank. Back hands it out. Lozon. Willette. Flips it on net. That had a weird pat, flutter pattern. Stopped by Shank. The Redbirds just dump it in. Gagnon and Gauthier chasing for it. Noel. Kalen Gauthier. Pressured by Dumont. Finds Noel on the other side of the ice. Noel just fires that in. Shank makes the save. He's going to hang on. Yeah, I mean, that came off the stick quick, Curtis. I mean, if there was a radar gun, I'm not sure, but definitely would have been 90-plus miles per hour. A Shank had to be aware on that one with his glove as it will be a face-off now in the Redbirds' defensive zone. Face-off won by the Patriots, Simon LaFrance. On the far boards against Walford. La France loses it. Walford gets it back. Rafa Nomez and Soa couldn't take down Uba. Uba centers it. Rouleau wasn't at the net yet. Rouleau sends it behind. Uba. Cleared away. Kept in. Prouse. Save made by Gravel and it goes high in the air. Took a deflection on Frateroli as well, I think. Walford. Sends it behind the net. Gravel comes out to play. A bold move. Cournoyer behind his own net. As both teams are going to go for a change. There'll be a new set of forwards here. As Cournoyer waits behind his net. Killing Gauthier to Cournoyer. On the far side to Susie. Susie 
ushers that puck in. Ford. And get it out. That shot blocked. A big hit. Crowd liking that. You got to make sure you get this puck out clean. UQTR really putting the pressure on on the forecheck. Noel long fires it wide. Gauthier keeps it in. Plays behind. Blanchard was already at it with Dumoulin. Both go down, neither getting the puck. Urad in his own end. Drops it. Blanchard. Long pass to Fortin. He enters the offensive zone, just flips it in. Gravel will come out to play it. Martin on the right side. Goes up against Ford, gets by. But he gets it into the corner. Maverick Gauthier. Sends it behind. Ford and Martin battling. Belzeal. Pass to Bennett. Bennett dumps it in. Daly chases it against Rafa Nomazansoa. Lozon. Picks up the pup. Near side, Rafa Nomazansoa angles it ahead. Ford. First one there, passing in the defensive end. Uba takes it. Just going to try to take on a few players. Slows down. Cross-ice pass, picked off by Félix Lafrance. 20-20 the shot, 4-4 the score. Literally as close as you can get right now, Matt. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see which team is able to get the offense going in the opposing team's zone. So far, it's just back and forth. A lot of dumps, a lot of chases. Well, well, what's good about it as well is that both teams are able to cleanly exit their zone. Cornoyer's shot. That took a deflection. That was dangerous. Shank makes the low pad save. Noel, his point shot doesn't get through. It's blocked by Dumont. He's from the far side. Throws it on net. It's blocked out of play. Yeah, big block by Dumont. Of course, Noel, double-digit goal scorer this season for the Patriot. So at this point in third period, with the season on the line, you're going to have to make sacrifices. Dumont well aware there. Blocking the shot from a very dangerous scoring defenseman. Frateroli and Baudelaire taking the face off. Draw back, La France can't get it through. Hold line. Monroe Boucher can't track it down. Hold line throws it wide on the right side. Kalen Gauthier sends it, goes off a stick out of play. I like the shot from Baudouin. He was looking at his defenseman, Gauthier, probably trying to convince Shank that he was going to pass it, but while he's looking at his defenseman, he takes the shot, trying to confuse Shank, but he doesn't bite. Face off to the left of Shank. It's won by the Redbirds. Frateroli, big face off win. It's cleared away, no icing. Gauthier on the backhand. He is pressured hard by the Redbirds. A fall by Belzeal. Doesn't matter. He gets right back up. Kalen Gauthier stumps it in. Belzeal at the other end. Simon Lafrance picks it up in the neutral zone. Long pass. Looking for Baudouin on the near side. He chases it into the corner. At this point of the stage, Curtis, whichever team is winning in the four-check battle will most likely end up winning this game. That's how close it is. Rafael Mazantzoas, long shot, bad save, as he picked it up just around the blue line. Other way, Fortin starts, Alexandre Gagnon on the right side, his pass bounces off Dumoulin, picked up by Cournoyer. He looks for Noel, a near turnover. 
and Gravel poke checks it away. Uar nearly had a chance, but they managed to get it out of danger zone. Yeah, great forecheck by McGill, able to create a turnover and a scoring opportunity. And Uar checks Gravel. Gravel takes a swing at him. They'll be going to the power play. A bad penalty by Alexi Gravel. Very much a bad penalty by Gravel, Curtis, you said it. That's probably not the name you'd expect. I'd, <laughs> you'd expect to hear out of my mouth if I said bad penalty by, but that will be the case. Uar. Walford at the point to the left side, drops it for Fortin. Fortin. Prowse, slap pass, misses. Noel touches up. It'll be a power play for McGill. Yeah, you know, I understand Gravel's not happy that he's being touched in general that close by a player. It's just the stick is too high here. Maybe if he gives him a little slash on the leg, something. Oh, like, that's right off the head. Exactly, right over the head. There's The, the referee's simply just going to have to call that. But I'm telling you, if he's got that stick a little lower, I think the ref would have let it slide. Oh, well, there's isn't a game of benefit of the doubt. I, I said goalie normally gets the benefit of the doubt. That's not really a case where uh, there involves much doubt. No. Anywhere else, I think they let it slide. It'll be a power play for McGill. They get a chance to take the lead. Frateroli and Italiani taking it. Now, well, the thing that has been the most successful for McGill, get them the lead. We'll have to find out. Shank leaves it for Walford. Starts from his own end. Scott Walford. Drops it. Gallon dumps it in. Chased by Frateroli for being hit by Kalen Gauthier. Behind the net just misses Rouleau. Frateroli drops it for Gallon. Gallon to Walford. Walford on the right side. Skates it towards the middle. Rouleau. Finds Gallon. Killed 50 seconds right now of this power play. Rouleau. Alexandre Gagnon. Two goals tonight. Looking for a third. Drops it. Walford. Gallon. Can't shoot the puck. He lost it before he shot it. I mean, Walford's got to shoot the puck there. He had a great A looking opportunity. I'm not sure why some of these players are electing to pass when they have a look like that. Uar re enters the zone. Leaves it. Blanchard, Gagnon, in tight. Save made by Gravel, loose puck. Blanchard gets it, Uar, back at the point. Uar waits. Underneath, back to Uar, on the near boards. Waits, back underneath. Maxime Gagnon looking for Alexandre Gagnon. Couldn't get a shot off, Uar. Near the face-off circle on the near boards. Blanchard keeps it in. Other side, he lost it again. Four times this time. Alexandre Gagnon centers it. Mathieu Gagnon turned aside. Fortin. Urar. Cross ice pad saved by Gravel. He's turned around. And it just seems like McGill couldn't get a good grip on the puck. I mean, they have so many dangerous players on this power play who can bury one. And, you know, it makes it hard for the defense to be able to pick which one's the most dangerous, as we saw him at McGill, able to move that puck around. They got great A opportunities, and Gravel had to stand on his head big time there with that bad save. 11 4 to play in the third period. 24 22 McGill out shooting UQTR. Take a look at this replay. A seam pass across the one timer and a good save by Gravel. But a great pass to get that through a lot of sticks. This Miguel power play, UQTR certainly doesn't want to give them another one because how well they can move the puck and get defenders out of position. Well, Gravel got the penalty that caused the power play, luckily for him. So Miguel, he had to stand on his head Exactly. He, he had to have his team's back. Rafa Nomazansoa, pressured by Uba and Dumont. Centering pass broken up by Felix Lafrance. Uba gets it back. Looks taken down. Maverick Gauthier gets on to Dumont before he could get the puck. It'll be covered by Gravel. You know, it is too late and too close in this game. 
to call that a slashing penalty as the McGill bench asked for one. But the refs know that they're not going to let this game be decided on the power play unless a penalty like Ravel took happens. But it's going to be a physical, gritty game so far in this third period. Italian taking the face off against Galon. One by Galon. Daly falling, drops it to Prouse. Prouse misses wide, picked up by Mathieu Gagnon. Walford shot through a screen, save made by Gravel. On the far side, L'Italien. Kalen Gauthier stumps it in. Shank will cover it. And it looked like the Patriot player was about to crash the net. And who else? Then Wallet scoring that Queen's Cup goal off a shot that squeaked through Kai Evans from the point, and he's there. You know, he's always going to want to be near the net, scoring these type of goals. That's sort of his game. Well, that's what he. That's how he scored earlier. He just kind of crashed the net and exactly you went know, underneath Shang. A power forward type of player. He makes his home and his career being around the front of the net. Blanchard, Ford. Offside called on the far side of the ice. Frateroli. It'll be interesting to see if some of these benches get shortened. I know Daly for the Redbirds didn't play much in the third period for UBC, but he's out here right now with halfway through to go, so it goes to show how well David Urquhart really likes the way his team and their four lines are playing right now. Pierre Olivier a long pass to La France on the far side. Fanet slapper! Blocked out of play, it goes. Will be a face off in the offensive zone as we will take a break in a couple seconds, but it is as close as can be. You do not want to miss a single thing. UQTR McGill. Semi-finals, 4-4. It doesn't get any better than this. CBC Sports is the home of the University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game from the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. All the action on U Sports on CBC Sports.ca, CBC Gem, the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC chase the glory. Both these teams looking to chase the glory and get to the finals in the final 10 minute stretch of this game. Felix La France. It's just left there. Walford from behind his own net looking to start a rush. This is where someone calls out Flying V! <laughs> then everyone follows Rouleau. But certainly a thing these two teams want to do is transition as a team so they have opportunities in passing lanes to create some offense. Ford, long shot, misses wide on the left. Gagnon angles it back behind the goal. It's picked up by the Patriot. Dumoulin shovels it out. Belzile, turnover, but luckily for him it bounced out of the offensive zone just barely. And a big hit on Uar. 
McGill fans looking for a call. They're not going to get it. As you said, Matt, relaxed whistles for the refs in the third. Yeah, it was a clean head in my opinion. Shoulder to body. Lozon turns a corner and drops it. Gauthier. Kalen Gauthier. Shot through a screen. Turned aside by Shank. It's clear UQTR. They want to get bodies in front of Shank. All it takes, Curtis, is a shot through a screen. And you never know what will happen, whether it will go in or you'll get a good opportunity on the secondary scoring chance. You just, you don't want to, you know, pass it around, try and look for the perfect play. You know, when you have an open shot, take the open shot. Don't force a pass when a defender has that lane blocked up, as we have seen happen throughout this game. Lausanne, Mathieu Gagnon taking the face off. Lausanne wins it, but back to nobody. It'll exit the offensive zone, enter the defensive zone. Cornway turns it over. Bad turnover. Almost roofed by Dumont. He misses high, though. He was in way tight on Gravel after the turnover by Cornway. The ref blows it dead. Gravel did not have it. but Well, he had it for a second, but a player, I think, moved his glove out of the way, which certainly you can't do. That's why the ref blew it down. Eight minutes remaining. Take a look at the replay. Bad it's, turnover by Cornway. Yeah, lost the p handle of the puck. Your heart kind of sinks as a defender when that happens. As Dumont was able to nearly roof it on Gravel. He just shot it up high. You got to make sure if you're a defender, don't hold on to the puck too long. Try and find your wingers along the boards. And get it out. Refinoma Zensoa sends it around Walford. Plays it after it exits the offensive zone. Prowse just dumps it back in. Noel. Prowse keeps it in. Doesn't get through too many players. Noel, long pass. Frenette down the right side. Frenette, save made with the pad by Shank. Good move by Frenette. Through the defender and able to get the shot off. Uba, long shot. Glove down by Gravel. CBC Sports, the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. It'll be a face-off to the left of Alexi Gravel. Cournoyer lifts it up. Monroe Boucher takes it behind his own net. Maverick Gauthier dumped in by Lozon. Ford turns it over, but will let his pinch just squashed against the boards by Maxime Blanchard. Dumped in by Uab. Alexandre Gagnon. Willett gets it, backhands it out. Ford, Gagnon, Prouse. Great pass. Down the right side, Jumeau missed the net. A turn and fire from Galon misses wide as well. Bounces off the side of the net. Baudouin passes it up to himself. He's going to be the first one there. Cuts in behind the net. Shoves a man off of him with authority. Looked like a stiff arm. Gauthier can't keep it in. Gagnon the other way. Dumont. Noel whacks it away. Great play by David Noel. Other way. Dumoulin. He's knocked away. Knocked down from behind by Mathieu Gagnon. He's dumped right back in. Look out, referee. Ford. Six minutes in the third. Backhands it. Into the offensive zone. Noel. Kalen Gauthier. Simon LaFrance. Ford dumps it in. LaFrance blocks it. Federoli. Rouleau. Rouleau. Throws it. Takes a deflection. Goes high left. That was a close one for UQTR. Frenette. Great feed. Felix LaFrance. Shot. Save made by Shank. 
off just the corner of his left pad. UQTR nearly had a lead. Oh, what a save by Shank with the glove. A great opportunity from the Patriots. Both goalies have had to answer the bell as we take a look at the replay. A great pass and right to Felix Lafrance. But a better save by Shank with the glove. Both of these goalies, Curtis, I know they let in each four goals. Yeah, they're but they have played amazing so far. Pretty amazing third period from both goaltenders. Lozon taking it against Fortin. I mean, you got two high potent offenses, both who average more than four goals a game. Susi drops it. Rafa Numez and Sol can't get it through. It's a three on two. Fortin, Alexandre Gagnon on the right side. It's ahead, Fortin backhands it. Save made by Gravel. Stops it with his shoulder. CBC is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the gold medal game of the 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific from McMaster University in Hamilton. All the action for U Sports Women's Volleyball is exclusively on CBC Gem, CBCSport.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. And one of these teams will be playing in their respective gold medal game. Which one we'll have to find out. So they got five minutes to decide this in regulation. Yeah, both teams trying to keep it simple, not force any passes. You don't want to, you can't afford a turnover at the blue line and allow the opposition to transition. You just gotta shoot that puck in and trust your forecheck to cause a turnover. Italian takes down Galan. He was racing to the puck. Rafino Mazansoa. Four check. Strong from McGill. Near turnover. Sliding through some Patriot players. Dumont keeps it in. Mathieu Gagnon. Walford. Slapper. Misses high. Mathieu Gagnon. Fighting for it. Baudouin clears the zone. Walford will have to wait to re enter. Halting any kind of momentum he may have had. Good decision by Gawain. Sees his defender taking the shot. Rushes straight to the eyes of Gravel. Just missed wide though. Frenette. The neutral zone. Rouleau. Gets it. La France. Felix La France slaps it in. Walford. He's pressured hard. La France. Felix La France in the near corner. Simone Lafrance gets it. Finds Noel. Shot misses wide. Loose puck scores. Frenette. What a goal, Curtis. What a play by the Patriot. Noel. It starts with the play in the corner, the forecheck of the Patriot. They're able to gain possession. Simon Lafrance, we know he has a knack for finding his teammates, was able to find Noel as we take a look at the replay. They win the battle in the corner. Noel tries to pass or shoot pass for Felix Lafrance, the tip in, but oh. then they're able to get the rebound, the secondary chance opportunity, and they bury on that. And now take the lead with only three minutes and 40 seconds left. What a pass by Simona France to the wide open David Noel. He misses, but Connor Frenette, a huge goal. Yeah, the Redbirds is not able to pick up on the puck when it was shot by Noel, and then UQTR jumps out of it, they score. Miguel's got to get something. Alexandre Gagnon, he's got two goals tonight. Shot! Angles off of Gravel and just wide. I thought that man had gone in for a second. It's going to be interesting now to see how Miguel approaches this game now. Down by one. When will they activate the D? When will they start taking big chances? When will the goalie leave the crease? Uar enters the zone, avoids the hit. Uar waiting for teammates, got to snap one on net. Goes high from a bad angle. Dumont, Fortin, shovels it behind. Picked up by Cournoyer to Ouellette off the boards. Ouellette, long pass. Baudouin misplays it. Goes right back to McGill. Dumont dumps it. Back in, Gravel comes out to play at a risky move. Goes out of play, they call. 
That's out of play, so faceoff will be in the Patriots zone. This is a crucial faceoff. 2.38 to go. Down by one, but Tuba player standing up still. He's not giving up. Neither will the Redbirds. Fratterol, he taking the most important draw of the season against Samuel Litalian. And for Miguel, you need to make sure if you're a defender, you are pinching. You got to make sure the puck stays in so you can get a chance to pull Shank and get the six on five in the zone of Le Patriot. Face off is won by L'Italia. They're able to clear it. Frenette picks up a steal. Shot saved made by Shank. And they blow it dead before Frenette can pounce on the rebound. Yeah, you just can't give up these turnovers right now at this stage of the games for these Redbird defenders. You take a look at the replay of the go-ahead goal here. As you can see, Felix LaFrance just misses the pass for the tip from Noel, but they're able to pick up on the loose puck and bury that one. We have talked about limiting those second chance opportunities. They were doing such a good job throughout the game, but obviously it's gonna happen where one lets, or you let one go, but this time it was just too important to let that one go. Maxime Blanchard clears it. Long down the ice, Gravel plays that bouncing puck. Into the far corner, Rafano Mazansoa can't clear it out. Few Redbirds in the corner. Got to keep this in. If you're a defender, you got to make sure you're pinching up high and deep to make sure you keep this in. Keeping an eye on Alexi Shank as well. And over the board, who other than William Rouleau? Ford, Rouleau. Cross ice pass, Blanchard. Geeks it right into Simon LaFrance. I don't know what they're waiting for, Curtis. I think this is the time for Shank to get pulled here. Too late now, but they had it. And LaFrance clears the zone. Ford. He turns it over. Simon LaFrance dumps it back in. You know, you never know when you're going to get another opportunity in the opposition zone and while you're controlling play on top of that. A minute 30 to go. It's do or die time for the Redbirds. Lausanne. Passes it to himself off the boards. They just keep it in. Kill clock is what they need. Monroe Boucher turns a corner. Pinching the puck into the far corner. Dug up by the Redbirds. Shank. Shank's got to go. I don't know what David Urquhart is waiting, waiting for. He might as well get six four checkers out there. Flipped out. Shank returns to his goal. They had the opportunity about a minute ago. Elected not to do it. And look what happened. Patriots went the other way and killed about a minute off the clock. And now Shank exits. Finally, a long clearance. Only 40 seconds left. Uba around Frateroli. Uba behind the net. Uba turns around. Finds Frateroli on the left side. Wait, shoots deflected high and out of play. Yeah, you got to make sure you have four guys near this net area making sure they capitalize on any second chance opportunities they can get now with only 30 and a half seconds left to go you're gonna have to win this face off as a timeout is called by mcgill as we take a look at the replay of the shot getting deflected out of play but that was smart play i think it was kaylin gautier who got a piece of that good on gautier as for McGill, now this becomes the most important face-off of their season. So you got to get your best centerman out there. So we take a look at the stats of the game, and specifically the, hit. the hits. We said those these teams do not like each other, and uh, I think it was on display. No, they do not, but every team in the national so far has been so physical, and that's what's going to take if you want to win a gold medal. You're going to have to be that physical, making sure the defender feels it on every play, making sure forwards are being held in check. Who is on the ice for the Redbirds right now? It's Frateroli out there with Walford, Rouleau, Uba, Alexandre Gagnon, and I believe it's Zach Gallon. Yuki Tiar putting out their best defenders. Of course. Face off one by Galon. 
or I'd call that a draw, honestly. Federoli drops it. Walford, left side, one-timer, save made by Gravel. Rouleau keeps it in, centers it, shot, blocked, out of play, puck goes flying. 15 seconds remain. Yeah, they pat it out. They're going to have to stop every shot that is going towards the net. you got to get your stick, your body in front of it. You just can't afford to let a puck loose because you never know what that secondary chance will look like. So here come the sacrifices. Frenette taking the face off. Got to win this. Against Galland. It's won by Galland. Walford, shot, blocked! Blocked by L'Italia! The UQTR bench goes nuts! Eight to go! Uba, Galland, throws it in front! Deflected away by Rouleau! Tickets tick down! That will do it! The Patriots survive! And advance to the finals! At the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey Championship. Wow, wow, wow. What a block from L'Italien. You know, Rulo was adamant. He wanted the puck on the one-timer. But the defender elected to shoot it. L'Italien there for the block. And like you said, Curtis, the UQGR Patriots, the second seed in the tournament, will go on to face the first seed UMB Reds in the gold medal match while McGill will look to bring hardware home, try and win the bronze medal versus the TNU Bowl tomorrow that is a tall task for a team on the road against the host team, but McGill certainly has shown they've got a lot of fight in them. Absolutely Curtis, and like I said, underlooked in the OUA, they were the seventh seed in this tournament they upsetted the second seed UBC Thunderbirds. Nobody really expected that to happen. They got outshot, but they scored on the power play. Shank played a great game. And then they really brought they really brought it to the Patriots this game. Close in shots, 28-29. Obviously, couldn't capitalize on the power play as much as they wanted to. But Gravel, a great game. Five to four, the final. They line up. For the ceremonial handshake, just what a privilege to witness this game. Well, it certainly was. Finally a close game for me and you. Yeah, and hopefully another couple close ones tomorrow in the bronze and gold medal games. Cross our fingers for that. Nothing better than having a close gold medal match. Patriot, they're going to try and do what nobody else could do this season, and that is defeat the UNB Reds, who are looking for the perfect undefeated season. But they will have to run in from the team from Trois Rivières to try and do so. As players will congratulate the other players, and well deserved. I mean, a hard fought game from both teams. I mean, McGill had their chances. They had UQTR on their heels at late in the second period. Just couldn't capitalize. Couldn't capitalize on the special teams. It was a great even strength game, Curtis. The Patriots scored two goals on the power play, and it comes back to those bad penalties they took early on in the first period. And that is what decided this game. Yeah, you talked about how... Important it is for McGill to capitalize on the power play. It was the Patriot who took advantage of it tonight. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, a 25% power play throughout the regular season. Did you hear the match? The UQTR. Numéro 20, Yoris Rafano Mezenza! And what a game from those two players, Curtis. Especially Gagnon scoring two goals for the Redbirds. And strong play from the Patriots defenseman 
Loris Raffanomazzo. Lori Raffanomazzo, game player of the game for the Patriot. Both teams getting a standing ovation from their faithful. It's not the end for either of these teams, of course. Both will play tomorrow. And I mean, great for McGill. They get to play for a bronze medal game after being the seventh seed in the tournament. They had to battle hard to get into that position, so kudos to them and the program. A great game from them. Cannot be understated. Yeah, Lord, we will have Lori Rafanou Mazansoa talking in just a few seconds, or a few, yeah, a few seconds. What a victory for the Patriot. And you know, they've won the Queen's Cup. They want it all. They want the clean sweep. They want the Queen's Cup. They want the national title. And what a year that would be, an historic year for the Patriots if they can pull this off. Obviously a three-time Queen's Cup champ. They won the national championship back in 2022. Now looking to do it two years later. Yeah, so the finals, it'll be the match between the two defend most recent champions as we throw it to Dylan and Lori. Thank you, Curtis. Technical difficulties here as we try this interview. Nothing. I just like this. Little technical problems here, hearing a uh, play by play broadcaster in French, David Brosseau. Loris Rafano Mezansoa, of course, the player of the game for the UQTR side. <laughs> David Brosseau asking uh, what the reaction was for Loris Rafano, Rafano Mezansoa when uh, the fifth goal was scored. Uh, Rafano Mezansoa having a hard time hearing, so he's going to repeat the question here. But uh, asking about the memories here and what what uh, what Rafa Nomezantua recalls from that fifth goal. Ah, ben moi j'étais sur le banc, mais j'étais soulagé de voir Connor Frenette marquer le but. Loris says that uh, he was really relieved. He was on the bench, but he was very relieved that they took back the momentum a little bit earlier and they were able to score that goal to clinch the victory over the McGill Redbirds in what was really a huge win for the uh, the the Patriot and. Uh, Some technical issues here. Uh, Rafa Nomezanso having a hard time hearing David Brosseau. Thanks, Lori, and thanks, Dylan. What a game it was for just you, QTR, as a whole. The Patriot get a chance to, I guess, redeem themselves after coming up short of the Nationals in national championship in 2023 against the reigning champion so like we said two most recent champions up against each other what a game that should be i mean two <laughs> great and legendary programs going head to head and like we said the reds trying to complete what nobody has done played more than 26 plus games of course as there has been undefeated teams but not to the extent of the umb reds so the number one seed versus the number two seed who could have predicted that? I'm not sure, but definitely well-deserved for the Patriot and well-deserved for McGill to be able to get the face off against the Bold for the bronze medal. Yeah, it's just an incredible matchup between these two teams. Plenty of highlights to show for it, and you're about to see them in a couple of seconds. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, and the game story, Curtis, I mean... It was such a good game play by these teams back and forth. You know, you can't really fault the team at, at anything. Obviously, the bad penalties by McGill in the first period, but it was still a tie game after that, and then it just came down to the minute details, right? The secondary scoring opportunities, some missed assignments, and then we saw that go-ahead goal was that uh, thing. What happened is they weren't able to pick up on the Felix LaFrance missed opportunity, and then it ended up in the back of the net, and that's basically what decided this game so very well played by both teams it cannot be understated and it just came down to a single play 
Yeah, it was just back and forth. We take a look at the second period. Goal three to one. Seconds later, Alexandre Gagnon, first of multiple on the game. Full back end there. Set then a little bit later, point shot, rebound in front. And that's what I'm talking about. The corner YA missed assignment. Was Gagnon was able to get loose and score that one. And then Gautier running into his own goalie. And seconds later, it's Wallet, the hero from the Queen's Cup, able to tie the game. I mean, just back and forth. And then in the third period, very even period. Both teams had their opportunities. Great pass by LaFrance. And look at that. They're able to pick up the rebound from the boards, turn around, shoot it into the back of the net. And that's what decided this game, basically. What a game. McGill was pressing at the end, but it just wasn't enough. UQTR taking the victory. You see the celebration there as we take a look at the scoring summary. It was truly back and forth. Yeah, and there's your player of the game, Gagnon, scoring two big goals for the Redbirds. Very well-deserved player of the game. And on the other end, um, for Loris in the defense, two assists. Great game by the defensive squad, limiting a lot of those second chance opportunities. And it came down to one that they honestly couldn't get, couldn't pick up the puck. Honestly, it was hard. It was off the boards. It was a weird bounce. And UQTR, lucky that it landed on one of the players' tapes and able to bury the goal. Yeah, as we take a look at the final stats now from this game. So close, 29-28, and we mentioned the power play. And you don't see that often, 0-4 for, for McGill. As a, as a Redbird fan, they, they're probably disappointed uh, about the special teams play in such a crucial game. I know McGill will think about that uh, as they look at the stats after this. 0-4 for, for, and then 2-5 for, for UQTR. Scored in the first period, you know. It just came down to those bad penalties in the first period. Yeah, just so close in the end. Just such a minute deep difference, and uh, in the end, it's UQTR able to capitalize on the mistakes by the Redbirds, advance to the finals. That's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah, great finals. A great two teams going head-to-head, -head, Patriots and UMB, and then also a great bronze medal game. So a lot of great hockey to watch uh, if you're a fan, so make sure to tune in on CBC for that. Yeah, this for Matt and the rest of our production crew, this has been Curtis Coleman thanking you for joining us for U Sports on CBC. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fedler, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, an exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sports. 